Very good. So, do you want me to walk through this? Do you want to? Okay. Okay. So, what IP address is what? Let's let's do it. IP address is nine. Dot two fourteen. Dot. Okay. Now, how many bits have we uh, borrowed? Twelve. No, no. How many? It's a class A. Uh, it's a class A uh, network. Okay. So how many bit, bits? So class A is what? Class A has one uh, eight bits of network and twenty four bits of uh, host. And this guy has twelve bits of network, which means what? Which means that we have borrowed three. Three here. Four? Eight. Eight plus four is twelve. Okay. That's, that's, no, three, four doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, four. So we have borrowed four from here. So that is our network. That's our network from, from, from subnet. That's our network. And that is our host. Right? So that is four, and this, uh, we have one of four bits, and network bits are 12, and uh, 20 are host bits. That's the answer. So what's the block size? If you have a block size, so we have four, we have covered, we have four bits here. Okay. The best way, the best way to have it is to look at this table that we have. Okay. So we have borrowed four bits. Okay. First of all, the mask on that fourth bit will be 240. Uh, so uh, we have borrowed uh, four bits, and the block size, the block size is you know for you, we are engineer. Two to the four is what? 16, and that is the block size, 16. So this, the number that we have to remember is this number, 240. So, so let me put it here. Okay, so let's go back. So we have bar the block size is 16 in which byte? In byte 2. Okay, now wh what is the mask? Mm -hmm. uh, I ask uh, Maggie, what's the mask for this address? 255. That's 255. Two four zero zero zero. Very good. What subnet number is this? Okay, that is interesting. Why is it interesting? Because I don't know why it is interesting. Yeah. We have to go with the uh, the block size is sixteen. So the first subnet, what's the first subnet in this network? It is 9 dot what? What's that? What's the first subnet on this address scheme? Okay. Well, my first subnet means, means that we have to concentrate on the second byte. Okay. The second byte has Eight bits. Better. So it's one byte. I divide it into second. Okay. So this is our. And this is our, and the rest goes for the host. So this is for our subnet. Okay. So the first number that comes here is what? Zero, 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 zero. The second subnet is what? Of course, the rest is zero. The second subnet, I add one to it. It's a block of 16 also. So that's zero, 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 one, zero, 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 and the rest is zero. OK? You got it? So. The first subnet will be what? The first subnet will be 255, five, uh, no, it will be what? Maggie, you tell me, what's the address of the first subnet? Um, 
9.0.00. What's the second subnet? Nine. The block size is 16. So the second subnet will be Jessica. Well, uh, you got it? No, don't, don't get confused. Do you know what I'm doing? Hey, Joe, what's the second subnet? 9.16. That's 16, that's 0, 0. Next subnet is 9.32, that's 0, 0. And we go ahead up to, let's, let's find the, the subnet before that. What's the subnet before that? Should be, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, subnet. Um, nine, one, sixty, two, twenty-two, four. Uh, one, 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 six, one, 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 and uh, 54, 198, 198 okay. This is 9.198, that's 0, that's 0. The next subnet will be what? Plus, plus 16, right? Well, it's 214, right? No. 0, 0, and then we go ahead, 16 is 0. Mm. Mm -hmm. 230. 230, yes. Thank you. So, our subnet is here. Now, our address is sitting somewhere here. So, we are part of the subnet. Okay? So, that becomes the subnet number will become. 9.198.00 Okay. What's the previous? The next subnet is this fellow. And the previous subnet is 16 minus this. We usually don't need the, uh, the previous one. 16 is 2. 182. Okay, so that is this one. Okay. What are the range of addresses for our subnet? So we are, we are sitting on this subnet. The range of address is what? Is 1, a 9 dot, nine dot, dot, zero dot 1. That's the first subnet. Okay. The last subnet, the last address is 1 before that. So how do we find it? That becomes 255, 255, 213, 9. Okay, and how did it, another way to get it is, if you are good in that, first of all is 198, 198, what's the binary number of 198? 192 plus, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, one, one twenty-eight. Are you sure it that's, that's 198 is correct, yes? No, it's not. It's not correct. The math is not. So it has to be divisible by 16. 16. You have to have 16. This is not correct. It's 192. 192. Yeah. Who said 198? But wait, coming from what? We have to find. Very good. Good. One ninety-two. One seventy-six. Very good. One seventy-six. And after that is sixteen zero two zero eight two zero eight. Okay. So, so the binary number of binary. So, in fact, the binary. It's always good to think in binary also. So, I'm only interested in this byte. So, on that byte, I have one dot one one zero 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 zero. That is one twenty eight plus sixty four is one ninety eight. 
and the rest is zero and zero. Okay, so the first address will be, of course, I put one here. The last address is that I get I get this. This this is part of the subnet, but the address should be all ones, and that gives me one ninety. That's two o seven. That is one ninety two. Okay, so that is we get that. So, so and uh, that's the range of addresses. But this is notice that this is an address, but this is a broadcast address. But what is the last usable address? Miat minus one, which is nine dot two o seven dot two fifty five dot two fifty four. Okay, the first IP address, last IP address. So that's, that's how it is. If you plan to take a Cisco exam, you have to be very quick on that, very quick. Okay, and Nana won't be there to correct your mistake. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Good. Okay. And we went through this, we went through this, overlapping, we talked about overlapping. And uh, now, any question? Any question from what we have covered? Sorry, are you okay? Are you okay? No. You look very thoughtful. <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm okay. Okay. So, shall we go? Yeah, shall we go? Yeah. So, that's the subject now. Let's continue. By the way, that material, those addressing, I don't think it is in your book. So these are the, the only thing that you have. That uh, book that I gave you, Miat, the PDF, it has a good section on that. By the way, you may want to give a copy to, uh, to Mike. Okay. So next, the next topic is that uh, how do we get IP address? How do, we, how, do, how do you get an IP address? Uh, what do you mean, like your registry? Yeah, I mean, no, no. You open your, uh, your, your laptop. Uh, your laptop can go in on the internet. Mm -hmm. So it, it does need to have an IP address. Yes. So how do we get it? Register? Well, in like... Well, no. A good advice to you is that when you don't know the correct answer, you the best answer is it depends. When you say it depends, you know, anything goes. <laughs> so, uh, register, yes. You can register, well, yes and no. Usually for IP address, for single IP address in an institution. Let's think about here in this institution. How do you get an IP address? You should know. Or we actually, yeah, What's that? There is, uh, it's, it's, it happens magically. Yes. Okay. If it doesn't happen magically, then what do you do? If, if your boss comes and says, Jessica, this is your static IP address. Use this. And how would you do that? You put it in the yes. So you need, it, you need an IP address. You can, have, you can be given an IP address by the admin, or you can, it, can be, it can be automatic. If it is automatic, it, is, it uses a protocol called DHCP. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Uh, and and uh, for that purpose, if you, are, if you are given an IP address, a static IP address, it is you sort of hard code it on your computer. Have you done it on your machine? Have you, have you ever put an IP address on your machine? No, no, no. I put an IP address before. No. no, you have not done it. How about you? I checking, but not uh, put it. What's that? I just check the IP address. You, you just check it. So you, you don't put it. Uh, yeah, you should have done it, yes? No, you haven't done it. You should have done it, okay. All right. So you tell them how you do it, okay? <laughs> no, the way you do it, let me digress here a little bit. 
It's very simple. Uh, continue recording and the way that on, on Windows 7 I show you I have you go on network say properties and the window comes here somewhere it says uh, this you click on this guy it shows your it shows your adapters okay uh, this the hardware I am not connected to it you can go either either one of them so let's go here and if you right click say properties okay and these are properties of your your NIC network in, uh, interface card your adapter there are a couple of uh, protocols running on that one of them you see that it is internet protocol version 4 that's what you're interested my machine is running in uh, version 6 or so on XP usually you only have version 4 so if you highlight it If you highlight here and say properties, and that's the window that you get. Here I have instructed the machine to go and obtain an IP address automatically. That is where it goes with DHCP and does it automatically, which I'm going to tell you how he does it. Otherwise, you have to give all this information. You have an IP address, which is whatever it is, and knowing an IP address doesn't, only doesn't work. You should need more information. You need a subnet mask, so so your machine knows what is the boundary of between host and subnet, etc. And also, you need what we call a default gateway. We will discuss it where it comes into picture. But default gateway is that, uh, in a narrow sense, you really can work with these two. You really can work. If you are in the same, if you are in the, in the subnet and you only talk with your with people that are in the same subnet, with their IP address, not name, and then you really don't, you are not going outside of the network. So you you only deal this with information. But if it happens that you want to go outside your network, you have to know where to go to go outside the network. We will discuss it. Then you know you, you need to know the gateway. Okay? Now. So if you uh, use only IP address, this should be enough. It keeps you going. But do you always use only IP address? No. no. Give me an example that you don't use IP address. Do you know what I'm asking you? OK. Give me an example that you, in order to communicate, you need more than IP address. You, do, you know, you don't communicate with knowing IP address. Give me a simple example. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Skype, uh, yes and no, yes. No. Give me, yeah, Skype is true in an instance, but Skype is behind the scene. Give me something that you uh, did. Okay. I'm asking Nana. <laughs> No, you're, you're too sophisticated. Very simple. simple. No, no, you can answer that. Uh, in our country, uh, we use. No, 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 no. They, they don't go in your country. Yeah, yeah. No, we, free, we use the freedom, so we need. No, 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 no. I bet, and that's not what I'm getting. Browsing, like a website? Browsing. Oh. You're using your browser, you put on your dot, 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 cnn.com. But that's just the domain. What's that? No, no, you are, you are saying, you know, your browser, when it works, we have talked about it, it cannot work with the name. It has to translate the name to what? To an IP address. Yeah. So it needs, it goes through DNS, name resolution that we talked about. But in a narrow sense, when it works, it, it is using IP address. If you had known IP address of CNN.com, you wouldn't have to put www.cnn.com. You put uh, HTTP, the IP address, 9.2.7, whatever. It would work. And it wouldn't go through. You wouldn't need this. If you only use IP address in all your communication, you really don't need, you don't need the DNS. But the moment that you use name, so you need name resolution, then you need this information also. Okay? So these are the things that you need to, in order to comfortably use your computer. So this is when you have static IP address. In Windows machine, that's how you do it. On a Linux machine, 
you go to certain directory, config, etc., 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 and there is a file, you change it, and then it works. Okay? So, so that is static. You can also use dynamic IP address, which is called DHCP. And with dynamic, it automatically system goes and completes this information. Okay, so that's how, yeah, that's how we do it. So let's go back to our own discussion. Okay, so, so we can either statically put hardwire it or, uh, and we can do it. If we put the static, for example, here I can put a static IP address. What is the danger of it? What is the bad thing about it? Joe? You don't know that someone else is not using that? Uh, assume that your admin says that, Joe, in this room 252, you can use this IP address. Then if you take your computer to somewhere else? Then you have to That's true. It. If you walk to from here to go to another subnet, then you are in deep trouble. Okay. As long as you are in the same subnet, which you don't know, you know where it is, you are okay. So for that case, we use this uh, protocol, this dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP. And this DHCP was sort of became very popular in when was it? Uh, 1993. Okay, that was the case that. And before that, I remember, uh, no, it was 95, 96. Uh, in IBM, every one of us were given an IP address, and uh, I had four computers in my room. I had four IP addresses, static, given to me by the admin. But then uh, things changed, and this is the dynamic IP address. Okay? And uh, you can use, uh, it's a sort of plug and play. Now, let's see how it works. Okay, uh, <coughs> so that's the goal. We want to allow the host to dynamically obtain IP address from network server when it joins the network. Okay, now the question is uh, either oh, okay. the question is is the IP address by itself is it uh, enough? We just discussed this. Is it enough, Joe? No. no. We need more information. We need the gateway, we need the mask, all those things. And uh, DHCP does it. Now, so the idea is that you come here, no, no, you put your laptop, open it, and connects the network and gets this information. There is a server somewhere within your subnet that provides you this information. Uh, tell me, the class, tell me, how do we do that? Just think about it intuitively. So you open your network, then what? What happens? Can you think what happens? Sure. Yeah. Okay, like, broadcast something? Uh, Very good. Broadcast. Broadcast as well. You broadcast to do what? To uh, <coughs> ask what the gateway is or who's controlling it. Yeah, so we broadcast to say, oh, is there any is there any DHCP there? Okay, no problem. So, do you have an IP address at this time? You don't have because you just opened your computer. Okay, but you know the broadcast address. The broadcast address is what? Two five five two five five two five five two five five. You just say broadcast it. Okay, and if there is a server there, there is a server. Now, one thing that you have to know, you say that. Someone is sitting there, and the server is working. When the server is running, is waiting and listening to what? Listening. The server is a program, OK? It uses the transport layer, and DHCP uses UDP. So the connection between application and transport layer was what? Socket, port. Socket is the generic, and the port is the real. The, so, so the server should have a port. And when I broadcast, I want to broadcast to DHCP server, which means that I am broadcasting to that particular port, which means that 
DHCP server has a well-known port. Okay, this is a well-known, I think it's 67 or 68, one of them. I think it's 67, okay. So I broadcast something to the port, okay. So the DHCP server, you know, sitting there and listening to that port and say, aha, I got this, and uh, somebody is asking, then what? Then what happens? Sam, you are sitting very quietly. Then what? What should the DHCP do? Well, Stan, we should know that. What, what, what does it do? Uh, Maggie, what, what, what does the DHCP do? First of all, you know, it, you know, it says that, yeah, I'm here. Okay, it says I'm here. And get an IP. And it says, okay, I'm here, I have the an IP address. But where does it send it to? Back to who? <coughs> to who? To this guy. But this guy, did you have a, an IP address? No. So how do you send it to me? No. <laughs> well, you, you know. You know, let's think. The way they, the same way that she, uh, he talked to you. Well, how did he talk to you? I broadcast. broadcast. Yeah, you broadcast. The broadcast is, ah, I'm here. And uh, I'm here, so but you broadcast. So using the same port. What's that? So the DHCP notices what, well, sees the port number it's coming from, so that's how it goes back. No, no, no. The, the, no. the HCP, that's your port. You're the server, you have a well-known port. You're sending a broadcast to another well-known port. That's a DHCP client, you're the DHCP server. There are two different ports, 67, 68, or vice versa. So you broadcast back that uh, I have an IP address and uh, I have it for you. Okay. Then what? Then what happens? Can you use that IP address? Yes. <laughs> no. Well, no, no, no. Did he give it to you? He said, then I have it. But you have to ask, you know, she's very sophisticated. You have to ask, beg her, you know, can I have this IP address? So you send back and say, this is an IP address that I want. Of course, when you send back, send that information and say, I have this IP address for, I don't know, two hours, three hours, whatever. So. You should now formally ask her, could you please give me that IP address? And how do you do that? Just send a request? Uh, well, okay, of course you request. Yeah. Well, no, 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 where, where do you send it to? Broadcast again. Broadcast again, because you, are, you don't have an IP address. So you don't, and you know, said, I, I request that. And you said, oh. I can approve it. You send it back to who? He, has, he, he still doesn't have it. He has, he still is requesting. You broadcast again you know, and say that, oh, I, I, I have it for you. And of course, other information, gateway, a DNS server, all of those things. And then now you have it and, and now, now you join the, join the cloud. So that's how it is. So this is a four-way transaction. Very, very, very intuitive. Very intuitive. Okay. So, so the host broadcast of DHC we discover. Then the server does an offer. Then you request. And then you acknowledge that request. And then you are done. So that is very simple. Okay. So here is an, uh, here is an example. Uh, uh, <coughs> So this is this is the environment. Notice that. Notice that I am I'm, uh, I am broadcasting, and you should know that the broadcast goes into a subnet. We will talk about it more. But the broadcast is goes within your LAN, within your subnet. Routers don't convey broadcasts because if they do that, if you send a broadcast and this got broadcast, the other broadcast, the whole internet you now is filled with the broadcast. So the router bro uh, blocks it here. So right now, assume that the ACP server is sitting on your subnet, okay? And you come here, open your laptop, and you try to join. 
And that is what happens. This is you. This is you. You send a source. This is your source. This is your port number. Okay? And you broadcast it. Is it in there? Okay, 255255255255. Five, 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 five. The broadcast two ports 67. That says that it's a DHCP server. Okay, and you don't have any offered IP address. And but this transaction, you put an ID on this transaction because there's there are a couple of messages back and forth. You have to correlate them. So you put an ID. Okay. So the the server receives it, and now it offers that. It says that that the offer comes from this source. This source is this guy. At port 67, this is the DHCP server. See that? The destination is the broadcast. Okay? And, uh, of course, the port destination, that's the DHCP client. I put it here, 68. This is the IP address that I offer you. And this is the transaction. Okay? And this is the lifetime duration. Okay? Then you now request that IP address. Again, you don't have any IP address, and you put a broadcast again, and this is, you say that, now I formally request this IP address, this is the uh, transaction uh, ID, the ID transaction changes, okay? And then uh, there's a time, and then you acknowledge that. Still, the destination is still broadcast, you can see that. You acknowledge that, and then um, this transaction ID, time, and then you can you can work. And there are other information that you exchange. Question? Where does the client pick that transaction ID number from? Like, where does the Yeah. Well, you know, you put your, maybe you look at your processor, your random number, something like this. Okay. Something that is unique to you. I don't know, but it's unique. There are ways to do that. This is, this is the request. This is the IP address that you're requesting. Okay. This is what was offered to you, and then you pick it up and then request that IP address. Okay. But you still, because it is not formally assigned to you, still your, your, your IP address is zero. All right, mm -hmm. and then when it acknowledges it, the source. Yeah. So up to here, you don't have any IP address. After that, you have IP address. Okay. And then, no, no. How do you check this IP address? How do you check your IP address? How do you check your IP address on your laptop? Oh, you go to uh, command. Uh, and then you say, and then, um, if, if config, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Interface config. And on Windows, you say IP config all, something like this. Okay, so it's very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, so uh, why do we uh, request a second time from the laptop to the server? Uh, why don't we use the destination address uh, as a two? I don't know. Because uh, we already know that uh, there uh, there's a uh, server address. I think, I think the reason is that you are not formally part of the cloud. So it may happen that by the time that you are doing that, someone has, has asks, and uh, it's not recorded here. Okay. You're trying to be very strict to remove any uh, race condition. Okay, and there are, and there are, I think there is something wrong with my. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and by the way, there, 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 there's a very nice lab that you go and look at, you know, Wireshark lab, that you can look at it. I may assign it to you, okay? So uh, these are other things that DHCP uh, returns, you know, DNS and mask, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, now uh, you see that DHCP uses broadcast and uses UDP. Now, what happens if uh, not good? Anybody has extra battery? I usually carry, but I don't have it. Okay. What happens 
what happens if the server is not sitting on my subnet? What do you think can happen if the server is sitting somewhere here? The router doesn't stop the broadcast, and then you don't have to know it, but you know, just what do you think should happen? It Say it again? If it stops the broadcast, then nothing's going to happen. So if it stops the broadcast, then uh, you don't have an IP address. Does it, is it logical? <laughs> Usually, within your organization, uh, Manhattan College has one DHCP server. Okay, that's a one, on one. And uh, so on, it has many subnets. You know that. So if you are, you are saying what you are saying is true, is that every subnet should have its, its own its own uh, DHCP server, which doesn't make sense. So what should we do? You should know. You know maybe. I should know. Most likely when you say it, I'll know. But <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, what happens is that. You instruct your router. If you get a broadcast DHCP request, and you give the actual address of the server to this router, and then the router sends it a UDP directly to that, uh, that server. And the server turns it back, and then you broadcast back. Okay? So that becomes a relay, sort of. Okay? That's one of the questions that you will see in your exam. Of course, the, the DHCP, the, the server is sitting somewhere on one machine here, for example. So the address of the DHCP server becomes uh, this. Okay? Becomes uh, 223111. You say that, uh, tell the router that the address of the DHCP server is whatever it is. And the router knows that how to relay it. Okay? I didn't say the MAC address. I know, but why would you? Because I know that we do put it in for some reason. That might be for security. Yeah. You usually don't. At, at the IP level, you don't deal with MAC address. Mm -hmm. The MAC address is done by a protocol, the ARP. We'll talk about it. But usually, it's actually because of security. Okay. okay? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you put? I have done. Uh, I have yeah, configured no, I routers. I put that my home to, uh, to for the security. For security? No, 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 no. no. She's saying that. We have a whole DHCP config with MAC addresses for each like device that's secure. Like, that's what we have. I don't know if it means because of the. So, uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. no, no. You are saying that the DHCP server always gives the MAC address? No, no, no. I'm just saying in, in the configuration, I'm assuming it's for static IPs, actually. Like when you're setting up the relay? Is that what you're saying? Sorry? When you're setting up the relay, you put the MAC address of the DHCP server? No. Don't you think how you can have it so that like, any time a certain device connects, it always has the same like, Yeah, so it's, like, so it's like a static IP kind of thing. Just depending, because it recognizes the device saying that this is... Uh, that is... Have. Okay, that is I'm not really part of... No. <laughs> no, no, no. That, uh, th thank you. That what, he, uh, what you're saying is makes sense. It would be nice that each time that I come to Manhattan College, I get the same IP address. So that's something extra. You can you can set up a ten table and and uh, if you get a request, you look at uh, the IP address and uh, so put extra things. You really don't have to, but you do that. Okay. Okay. This is not good. Uh, so, um, so the, 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 we didn't talk about it. But so we have broadcast and unicast. Okay, uh, DHCP example. This is an. So you are sitting here router with DHCP server built into the router. Okay, so we come here. Oh, he's doing animation. So by the way, DHCP. Uh, program is an application program. It sits on application level. Okay, it's, uh, 
this bit here, the Jews is UDP, and then IP, then it goes to Ethernet, mix a frame, your request comes here, and then goes here, and then you have your HTTP, uh, and then you get reply, and then you come back here, and then you're done. Okay. There are some texts here that uh, you do that. Okay. And here is a Wireshark uh, uh, dump of whatever you have. You can, you can follow it. It's not difficult. Okay. Okay. Uh, any question? Clear? Okay. So that is how we get an IP address it's for your machine. The next question is, how do you get a, a bunch of IP address? You get a block of IP address for your uh, for your uh, uh, for your network. For example, Manhattan College goes to there is a network provider goes there and says, "Give me a block of IP addresses." It's a block of IP address. And then you can, uh, the, from that block, Manhattan College decides that I need so many subnets and so many hosts, and then I do this uh, uh, division. Here is an example. Assume that there is this, uh, your ISP goes to ICON, some uh, higher level provider, and gets this address. Okay. Uh, this is the IP address. This is an IP address. It is, uh, it is 168.23.16.0 slash 20. It's a subnet address. This is the subnet address. So your ISP, there is, I want to open a company. I go and buy this address. So whatever address I assign to my clients, I can play around with these numbers. This part should be fixed. Okay? So that is what I get. First of all, what class address is it? Class B. Which means that if I want to subnet, I have to subnet within these two bytes. I cannot subnet here. The example that you have in your book uh, is, is not kosher. Okay? If your book gives you a class C IP address and tries to subnet in this area which is not kosher. You don't do it in practice. Okay. So, you come here and then um, uh, assume that you say uh, so this is my company. I say that I have these clients. I like to have uh, up to eight clients and each client can have up to uh, 500 nodes. Okay. How do I submit that? First of all, how many bits do I have to play around? 12 bits, right? So how do I submit it? It's a design problem. Joe? Um, we need at least 9 bits for each of the clients because they each have 500. 510, 500 nodes. And we need... I said up to eight clients. Yes, yeah, so the remaining three is three. So that's very nice. So there are three bits for clients, and then each client has nine bits. So that's how I, uh, I, I first of all, I try to fix my uh, pointer. Sometimes this works. I warm it up and put it back, and it works. Yeah, it works. So that's how you do it. See? So these three bits are for client numbers. I give this block to the first client. Okay? So on this one, notice that the side notation is 20. For each client, now I have fixed so many bits. I say for client number one, this is your subnet, 23. Client number two, second subnet. So I put I fill it with binary. Up to ply and client number eight, this is one one one, and this is this, that's this address. That is where the concept of the block size comes into picture. Okay? So that's how so this is how you do it. You and the client goes 
uh, assigns this 9 bit switch uh, workstation by DHCP static water grid. Okay? <coughs> Okay, now, uh, so on the internet, this is your ISP. ISP tells the internet, notice that this address is the same address of this one. Tells the internet, if you get any address that matches this, the first uh, 20 bits match this one, pass it on to, uh, to me. I can take care of it. So any datagram, with the destination IP address that masks with this, then um, uh, you have it. By the way, what is the mask of this? This. What is the mask of this? What is the mask of this? Tell me. Two five five. Two five five. The four bits. Look, you have that table, it's 240. I think it's 240, right? Am I right? Is it 240? Yeah, because it's the same over there. Yeah, okay, very good. Now, well, how about the mask for this guy? What's the mask for this? It's 255, 255, dot. This, I have taken seven bits out of this, so this is only one bit here, right? So that should be 252. Okay. So there's a mask. So this is the mask. So if the network, if I get any address, I mask it with this, and I get this number, I grab it. Okay. And then I, uh, then I mask any datagram, I mask it with this. If I get this, I will send it to this organization. If I get this address, I send it to this organization, etc., etc. So that's how it is done. Okay. Now, <coughs> now there is an, another uh, uh, right. For example, there is another ISP that has this block of IP addresses. Then, if you go and acquire it, then you have to uh, sort of combine your your routing tables so that you can get, uh, grab this and this, and then you do that. When you assign IP address. Uh, you have to try to speed it for you. Your blocks should be consecutive. If there is a gap between them, that usually causes problem. So there are two things important. Try not to have overlapping, and then no gap between them. It's consecutive. Okay? Good. And there are some, uh, uh, sort of, uh, I say that this is the IP address, this is the mask, and then how this works, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, lastly, how do we get this block of IP address? We could, there are a couple of organizations. In the old time, it, there was only one organization. It was called ICON, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Okay? Then you go there, and uh, you allocate an IP address. You set up your DNS, etc., etc. You go to another organization, get your name, and you are off to go. Okay. Any question? So you're all set. So you, it's clear to you now how you get IP address at home, how things work, etc. Et now this topic is interesting. So you go to home, and uh, there should be a DHCP server where? Sitting where? Your DHCP server at home. Where does it work? Right. Your router. And you get a DHCP server. What's the typical IP address that you get at home? What's that? One ninety two. Then what? One sixty eight. Dot something. Usually one dot one forty, for example, something. What class address is this? C. C. You're right. You no, know, speak up. Okay. What type of address? What, what category address is this? I have told you. Five bit. 
It's a private address. These two things private. And usually your your router is typically 192.168.11. Or what's the last IP address? And what's your mask typically send? Have you seen your mask? Zero. That's usually your mask. What is the la what's the first? Um, so your what's your subnet number? With this mask, what is uh, your subnet number? Come on, don't be shy. Sam, come on. 192? Speak up. You are, I'm recording you. you know. <laughs> 168? 255 is a mask. If you mask this with this, what do you get? One dot zero. So that your that is your uh, your subnet. By the way, what is the next subnet? Joe, you tell me. With this mask, what is this next? That's the first subnet. What's the next subnet? That's correct. What's the first IP address? So you are on this subnet. What's the first IP address? 192.168.1.1. What's the last IP address? What's, what's the broadcast address? 192.168.1.255. That's correct. What's the last IP address? 254, that's correct. So typically, on these routers, typically they choose this or this for your router address. And, and typically this guy. Sometimes uh, they use zero. I think on my computer I said, said, you can set it up, what you want to do. By the way, uh, this is a class C. If you want to have a class B address, what address would you choose to? Yet. 127? Class B. Class B. Ooh. Class B. You're very tired, Jessica, tonight. <laughs> what, give me a. Uh, what, uh, Jessica, you want to set up your home network to use Class B address. What do you do? Of course, you have to set it up. <laughs> okay. What IP address do you assign it to? You instruct the router to assign what? Maggie? Uh, class B. I want to set my network router to use class B IP address. First of all, these are private. So which means that within my home network, I have to use, I rather use private IP address. Very good, 172, then what? 16, and then whatever. And that go, I can go to 172 what? What's the, first, the next number? 31. All these are IP address. The class B address. If I wanted to put class A IP address, what would you do? Come on, Sraya. 10. 10, very good. Then I can use whatever I want to do. I am free to use anything here. It's convention. From 16 to 31 are, are private. Okay. 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 So, so, you go assume that you have put, Jessica, has, uh, Maggie has put, uh, I promise you by the end of this semester, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I can just <laughs> I'm still so, so <laughs> at the beginning of the semester, okay. So, Maggie goes home and sets up her router to use one, 92, 168, this, uh, this one. That's zero. Okay? And Nana goes and does the same thing. Okay? So Nana has an IP address on her machine. The, the router is one, and Maggie is one. 
they can work and your, you get an IP address with DHCP 140 and NANA gets 140. Then, and we know that within internet, all IP addresses are unique. But they can, both of you can work. How is it possible? What's that? Is it because they are different ports or something? No. No, no, I never mentioned that. Network address. What's that? The network address. Yes. No, no. So what, you know what is the problem? You see, you see the problem. There is nothing to do with port. There is an IP address. Within the internet, is a, is a, uh, the rule is that every entity should have an IP address. And by the way, you're at home. At home, you go and get a router. Well, first of all, this, this cable comes from, assume that you're using cable vision. The cable comes here. Then what happens? Well, then what do you do? You put a splitter here. One goes to your TV, and the other one goes to what? Was an Xbox here? Modem. Modem. Because the signals are here, you have to translate it to digital. And this modem goes to where? Goes to your router. And the router usually there's a wireless router also, and it has some ports. So the router, what actually happens is that the router, when the moment that you connect it, and you turn it on, it talks, it becomes a client. It becomes an IP client. That's the DHCP client and talks to your ISP and get a good, kosher, unique IP address. For example, 156.212.6.7. Okay. It gets an IP address. And then comes and you connect your machines here with wireless, with wire, and it tries to give you IP addresses. Okay. So these IP addresses are within your, within your cloud. When it goes out, if you use this IP address, then you're in trouble. You cannot. The routers are, are instructed not to route any one of these private IP addresses. Okay. So what do we do? Joe, don't answer that. What do you think should happen? First of all, do you see the problem? Do you understand the problem? Stan, do you see the problem? Show you some expression. I want to see that you understand. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Jessica, you understand the problem, right? So, how do we know what, what should we do? Kim, you are sitting very quietly. Participate, please. Hmm? Yes. Let me let me be more. Uh, that's very clean. Let me be cleaner. Okay. <laughs> Typically, you are sitting here, and that's your router. And it's a wireless router, and usually it has four ports also. Okay? Okay. So, you bring your laptop here, it's a wireless laptop, and it talks to your router, and with DHCP, it gets an IP address. And it gets an, a private IP address. Okay? Assume that you get 192, 168, 1, 140. Okay? You really don't have to be connected to outside. You can bring another machine here, connect it here, and these machines can talk to each other. Then, if you want to go to outside, you connect it to a modem, and then connect it to your ISP. And then internet. Right? Now, then uh, Kim is also sitting at home. He has his own Netgear router and he connects his laptop. Let me come here because I want to see myself. So that is Jessica. 
And Kim comes here and he has his own router and laptop and connects and he also gets 192, 168, 1, 140 or whatever, any, uh, some private IP address. Okay. Then uh, he is also connected to a modem and goes there. The moment that you connect your machine to outside, you get an IP address. For the time being, assume that you get a unique IP address. It is possible that your ISP has his own private IP address. Sometimes the IP address that you get is 10 dot something, which is private, but let's, let's assume you get a good IP address. Here it gets 173. 15, 16, 7. Here you say 10.2.1.7. So this is the IP address of your router facing the network. Okay. So you want to send, uh, and there is CNN.com here. Okay. Now, Jessica opens his browser, her browser says www.cnn.com because goes here wants to come back here and Kim does the same thing because goes here reply comes back here if I use this IP address assuming it is routable does it work? it doesn't work because there is the same IP address cnn.com doesn't know where to send it this guy or that guy how do we solve this problem? Because the router has its own IP address. So. The router has IP address. Yes. That's true. Okay. But your browser, does your browser know the IP address here? Do you know the IP address here? Only you. You don't know. Unless you go to the browser, to the router and then check for it. So what, what happens here? How do we communicate? You are on the right track, by the way, Miat. But uh, the ISP, ISP doesn't uh, want to uh, know uh, which IP address the client is using. The ISP doesn't know which. Yes. You, you are you saying the ISP knows that uh, what clients? So, so you can have five uh, laptops. Maggie can have ten laptops. ISP doesn't follow the, what you are doing in your private network. The ISP only follows the router. ISP only knows here. But you want to go from here, go to CNN and come back. Well, then go so Say it again? It'd go from your laptop to the router. That's correct. The router to the internet. Okay. And it, you know, it goes to, it goes so th that's very true. That's the physical path. Then yeah. but, uh, what happens to these addresses? Well, they change according to... According to what? Routing What's routing table? Uh, no, no. You, you, I'm t you're, you're on the right track. I'm trying to extract the uh, right answer from you, Jessica. What, what, what should we do? Let's be a little bit more specific. Here, here, assume that uh, the IP address of this guy is, give me something, 132.2. 16.57.5. By the way, what class IP address is this? B. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, your your browser sends something there. At the IP level, you have an IP datagram which has your HTTP payload, and here you have the source. The uh, IP address and destination IP address. The source IP address is, is what? 192.168.1.140. Destination is 132.216, etc., etc. This is the IP address here. It comes here, it goes out. If I send this datagram the way that I received it, which is this IP address. It gets dropped because it's a private IP address. You go to public network, 
The first router that you go to is just drops it. So what should we do? There is a DHCV server in the router, so uh, it changed from the 192.168 to 172. No, DHCV server, DHCV is only to get IP address. There is, there is something else. What was that? Uh, no. The, the internet knows whatever it is through this IP address. 133. Okay? So whatever it goes out of here should have this IP address as the source. Okay? This is not the task of DHCP. This is the task of another entity. We call it Network Address Translator. DHCP, NAT. NAT and DHCP are totally different things. DHCP is to assign IP address. NAT is to do this trans uh, translation. Okay. So when we go out of here, I have to, rather than this IP address, I have to do 133, 15, 16, 7 here. It should go out. OK, with this. Now, assume that you have another node within your network. And this guy is 192.168.1.130. You have two laptops at home. And you want to go also to CNN. So this IP address also comes here. When it goes out, should have the same source IP address. 133, 15, uh, 15, 16, 7. Okay. Destination, of course, the destination, I use DNS and put the proper destination, so whatever it is here comes here, and destination IP address. Okay. So I do this translation. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. Why doesn't work? Because uh, it does it need a token or something like that to identify. Uh, That's very true. It doesn't. Know, it doesn't because because when, once you reply here, it reply to both this node and this node come here. How does this guy direct your traffic? Distinguishes between your traffic and this traffic. How do we do that? What do you think we do that? Joe, do you know? I think uh, when we give the route, router from the uh, clients, uh, we should, uh, after giving the IP address, uh, we should give uh, a token or something like that to each client. So after each client request to the router, okay. it's no, uh, and it can translate. So you are saying that each time that I want to go out, I should get a, a token and then... Yes. So each time that I want to go to any, but no, you got like to go to CNN, I go to Manhattan.edu, I go to New York Times at uh, com. Each time I want to go, I should get a token. No, because a specific token for each client. Well, with the um, IP address. And so if the IP address, uh, if this guy gives a token and you shut down your machine, what happens to that token? Uh, it's delete. That's it because it's an automatic IP address. So. Because next time when the clients come on the router, it can get another IP address with the different. That, that mm, might work. It's not the way that, but you know, your idea is right. So you're, you're saying that, so let's just assume that I give a token. So I give you, that's a good answer. In fact, that's a good solution. Uh, I give you token, token A, I give token B. So I say what? No, no, that uh, solution doesn't work, but let's see. So, so this guy has a table. It says that if it is 192, 168, 1, 130 is token A. 192, 168, 1, 140 is token B. Okay, so it puts the same IP address, send them here. Then you get a reply. You get a reply, usually the reply should be like something like this. The source is what? 
Source is this guy, 132-216-75. And destination is what? Uh, this guy, 133 15 16 7. So you get this datagram, then what do you do with this? Uh, because uh, the router know uh, which uh, ad IP address is uh, no, asking for. Them. No, so the router doesn't know that. The router, the router receives this datagram from outside. It goes to this destination, which is me. And then what? Because uh, after when we uh, request uh, from the router to the cnn.com, uh, oh. we put it in the memory. So what memory? Because the router has a memory. Router has memory, but what do I put in the memory? So uh, the specific uh, IP address uh, has this token uh, <coughs> request to the CNN. So where is the token? So I have this. I have. I have this memory. Yes. So I send this datagram out. Two datagram. They go out. I get a reply. And the reply was supposed to go to this guy. How do I distinguish? How do I use this information on this table? You need, a, you need one more piece of information that you can carry with your datagram. Because this datagram, if you have your uh, a local tag, doesn't help. There should be something that this guy can carry. And that is what Kim said, port number. Now that you said it, you are the victim. How do I use it? How do I use the port number? Uh, I think the first port number is uh, <coughs> just let them choose in the com computer to send the router first and allow to change the new port number and the CNN server. Okay. And communicate the CNN server to route yeah. and okay. port number. <coughs> let me, he, you are a writer, he's right. The thing is that right now the router, which is, the router works at what level? What <coughs> level of? protocols. Come on. Router works at application level? No. At what level? Network, network layer. Network layer. Okay. Okay. So right now we are dealing with network layer. So IP address was as network layer. Kim said port number. Is port number something at network layer? No. Port number is something that we use it at Transport layer. Okay. So right now, Kim said it, and his answer is right. But we are violating this hierarchy. Router, which is working at the network layer, now wants to fool around with the port number. So we do that. We do this violation. In a narrow sense, the purists, they don't like NAT because port number is for transport layer. But this datagram that goes out. This, these are the, uh, this the IP header, right? And part of it was the transport header. In the transport he header, we have source port number and destination port number, okay? What is the destination port number of this guy? I'm talking HTTP. Destination port number is 80. 80. So that's, I go 80, which is as this. So source port number is what? What is it, Kim? Okay. Something because my, my operating system one um, five thousand six hundred seventy one, for example. The port number on this guy is uh, say six thousand seven hundred fifty one. So okay. So when I get this guy, so I have rather than token, I say this guy came with this IP address and this port number. 6751. And this guy came with IP address on this uh, number, 5671. I will translate it to what? Kim. I will translate these two numbers to what? Rather than this IP address, I will use what? <coughs> I will use this. Uh, 133. One five six seven, and I will give it a another unique port number, say 
something that I know doesn't conflict, and I say it was um, 21,061. Okay? But uh, what are, uh, how many bits do I have for port number? No, no? Something. Port number? Uh, no, 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 no. Port number, how many bits do I have? Sixteen. And how many, uh, and so how many ports can I use? Uh, port is something, you, but the port is not physical, it's logical, it's a number. 2016 is 64,000 and something like this. So I can have up to 64,000 application running. But, so, I give it something and this guy, I give it this IP address, 15167 and another port number 32,756. Okay. So that is what I put in the IP address that I send out. Okay. Of course, these are unique, so I really don't need to record that. So I say that input port, this port number. I translate it to this port number, and the IP address is here. Input port, this port number, I translate it to this guy, IP address is this. I put the, the datagram. That is uh, source IP address, destination IP address, and then source port, destination port. Destination port is what? It's an HTTP, it's 80. I send it to this guy. And this guy replies it, replies it directly to this IP address and to this datagram. When I, that is this way. When it goes this way, the datagram is that is the source IP address. The source IP address is what? The destination IP address is this guy. It is one thirty two two one six. What is the source IP address? This guy, the unique um, the the new unique IP address one thirty three fifteen something. It goes here. The typical HTTP request web request reply comes. The source now is what? 132 and uh, 216. The destination IP address is what? Uh, Stan, what's the destination IP address? 133.15. That's very true. Very good. 133.15. What's the source port? What's the reply? Source port is 80. 80. Destination port is what? Six seven five one. So the router gets this guy and says that aha, I have this port number. Uh, probably who said six seven five one? How did you say it? I translated this guy to this. So the the, the this that is, that is what goes outside. Okay. Okay. When you get this guy, the router checks the port number and then says, aha, this, this should be translated to this port number, 6751, and the IP address is this guy, 192.1.130. I put it here and send it and it goes here. So there is this translation. You see. So you see, you saw how it works. So this is called Network Address Translation, NAT. Within Cisco, they have also PAT, and there's some division, but the, the essence is this. The essence. So you got the idea. So let's go through some points. Uh, uh, you didn't get the idea. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, previously, I, uh, I saw that uh, if I give the same IP address for two, uh, computer or laptop, then there is shown a message that your IP address is used for... That is very true. Within your private network, it should be a... Is a is you have a network. Within a network, IP addresses should be unique. So, it is a private IP address, but it, if you have 140 here, you cannot have 140 here. Okay? That's very true. And if you... If, if you statically assign these IP addresses, you know, the network 
uh, complaints. That's that's what you have experienced, right? Yes. Okay. Not the only thing, but uh, I have had a previous uh, mm. cystic kidney Yeah. That uh, usually doesn't happen, but if it happens, there is something wrong. If it happens, it's better to turn off your router and turn it on, and then your machines also. You can either turn off the machine or you can release your IP address. Um, is, there is on this, if you are using Windows, say I, IP config slash release DNS. So it releases and re or re something like that. You have the question? Uh, why can't we use the same port number that uh, we use in the uh, local IP address? You can do that, but there is a danger that this, is there a chance that this, this uh, port number that comes from here, are these unique? They are random numbers. So. They are random numbers within your computer. Yes. They are unique within your computer. Oh. But it doesn't mean that they are unique within your network. There can be a conflict. So it, this guy usually tip, picks it up. So sometimes you use the same IP address, but you don't have to. Okay, so that is that. So that's the story. That's the story. Uh, ba ba ba. Are you tired? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you? You are sitting here. Why are you tired? <laughs> no, no, I'm just. Kidding. You want to take a break? Sure. Okay, take a break and come back.